Hey guys, it's Drax here, and as requested, here's a quick summary of all the changes and additions mentioned in the Critical Mass livestream with a few of my thoughts. So I'm going to cover this in the order it ran, first up with the new Light Assault Jump Jets, and they're named Ambrosia Jump Jets. These jump forward like you do in Star Wars Battlefront. If you played that game, you get a very aggressive style of gameplay from equipping jump jets. So they've added it to this game after a lot of um, players have requested it. This is timer based so fuel doesn't recharge and the light assault only implant aerial combatant at top tier should reset the timer near instantly. So like I say great addition allowing players to be more aggressive but also when combined with the implant allowing you to be more evasive and escape easier. I'm unsure of the cert costs currently but Rao did say they would cost more to cert up than the other jump jets. Next up was the Nanite Repair Grenade. It costs 200 certs to obtain. Once thrown it takes 3 seconds to activate and repairs maxes and vehicles for 10 seconds. This grenade actually sticks to the target you wish to repair, so not only can it be used to repair from afar, you could also use it in a way where you throw it onto your vehicle or friendly max suit, technically pre-buffing them if you know they are about to take damage. You could compare it to injecting a restore kit before you enter a room, you, like, you pre-buff yourself so you go in and any damage you take you're still healing while it's going on, it's the same sort of uh, thing going on here for the max suits with this repair grenade. So just a note with these though, they don't stack so best use singly, maybe with a designated engineer in a squad so you know that only that one guy's going to be throwing it because you throw too many it just doesn't work, you want the, the single grenade going off to heal whatever max and vehicle one at a time. The nanite cost is currently set at 75 so you wouldn't want to waste one of these either, it's quite expensive for a grenade I think, is that the same cost as an EMP grenade currently? Something like that, maybe they're just that in future but these can be quite strong if used in the right circumstance. After that they then introduced a new team member to the community and this is Paul Giaggio who is a programmer. He's not exactly new to the team though as he has been working on the big changes that you will see next. His main character is on NC so that's gone down well with the factions players and he looked to be very excited and passionate about the game so welcome to the team Paul. On to the big changes that Paul and the team have been working on. Victory points have been changed, no longer can Hive single handedly shut down a continent and territory control will not trigger a lock on its own or suddenly either. The new system requires you get 8 points from territory and 2 points generated by Hives. Just to be clear here, you can have loads of hives scattered across the continent, but from what we saw in the stream you need to get 2 active cores and to have refined 10,000 Cortium to gain these 2 points. Once the 10 point total is reached, an alert will start in favour of that faction. This is called a meltdown alert. If the faction that started the alert wins, they will lock the continent, so it would be the job of the other 2 factions to stop that from happening. Now this has a few people worried, but I understand the devs thinking behind it. Obviously that equals a 2v1 situation, but if one faction normally controls most of the territory, in most cases this is because the said faction has higher population than the other two. With higher pop the simple goal would be to defend the borders from attacks on both sides, maintain the territory control and lock the continent. Sometimes you can have low pop and still be attacked, but with this system it should direct attacks to the correct place. So on to a few more details, if the faction that started the alert fails to win, then that faction will lose its 2 VP generated by the hives and will then have to regain them to start the alert again. A loss will also mean that the faction has lost territory so points by the end of it could be less than what they started with, so they might need to regain the territory points again. Or it might, go, it might swing in the other favour of a different faction during the alert and then maybe they can start up their own alert shortly after. But what happens if your side wins the alert? Well then the old lock banner will still be there but no longer in the middle of your screen. It's now placed near the top right. The sky will turn a dark eerie colour and among the orbital strikes hit in the ground wiping out all the remaining enemies you will be able to see the bastion fleet carriers hovering up above you. These are a sign of total domination. Sadly no more than that but it's nice to at least see their basic models being used. For participating in the alert no matter if you won or lost, you will get rewards. These are loot boxes possibly containing rare items you are not able to buy in the in-game depot. You also get a certain amount of items of 4 depending on how much you participated. The loot box rewards will be in tiers so winners will get the best rewards and losers will get a small or lowest tier reward box. 
So that pretty much sums up the main stuff. I'm really impressed with what they've come up with. A lot of player suggestions have been taken on board. And the live stream as a whole was great to watch. So good work Daybreak. Maybe just turn up the volume a little bit in the future so we can all hear what you're saying. They also flashed up this weapon on screen just to tease us. Looks like an NC weapon of some kind. I won't guess too much as it will likely be changed a ton before we get to see it on live. And we also got to see the NSX Daimyo. So I'll probably be checking that out in the PTS update in the near future. But that's it for this one. Hopefully this video has been helpful and informative. As always any thoughts please leave them in the comments. Like and subscribe for more videos on this channel and I will see you next time.